Hello, everyone. My name is Jerome Scriptunis. I am the uh, chapter leader for TechSoup Connect for Time Banking and Community Organizations. I recently met Mr. Robert Kubaya through TechSoup Connect, and I have, over the past couple of weeks, become acquainted with his work and some of the people in Uganda, and it is a wonderful experience for me. I've never traveled to Africa. I have never worked directly with people in Africa. So this experience is extraordinary for me. I am honored to have this opportunity to speak with you. I want to share with you some information on how I've been using LinkedIn and to give you some resources and to discuss perhaps towards uh, the end of the session, how we might collaborate and help each other additionally with using LinkedIn. I'm going to share with you some resources I've used to prepare and some tools and examples within LinkedIn to, to use LinkedIn actually as an example for what I want to share with you. Helping me today are some people who work with me in the United States and in Jamaica with my organization called Youth Time Banking. Youth Time Banking is an organization that helps youth primarily from the middle school to early 20s to build strengths and make social connections in their community as they uh, work towards transitioning to adulthood. It's based on a model called time banking, which uses time as the currency. Valerie Guerin is the youth time banking coordinator in Southbury, Connecticut, and she is working with me and making some comments and monitoring any questions that come in through the chat. So thank you, Valerie. And if possible, Tafaris Gray, who is one of the youth leaders from YTB Jamaica, will be joining us as well. So as we get started, I want to use one of the tools we uh, frequently use in our meetings with Youth Time Banking, and I also use when I'm working with TechSoup Connect. It's this tool called Poll Everywhere. So I'm going to ask, since we have several people, it's a nice way to get a sense for who's joining us and who's participating with us. So I'm going to bring over another, let's see, and a slide this over here. So these are the instructions. I put some in, the instructions into the chat and Valerie, I'll ask your help. If what seems to work is if you choose to participate to go to the website poll.ev.com forward slash YTB Youth 147. That will uh, give you access to using this poll and you can enter an A, B, C, or D to indicate how long you've been working with LinkedIn. So if someone would please try that and see if that's an effective way to have some interaction during our session. And Valerie, if you would also <laughs> respond on here, I don't know if the text messaging would work internationally. It may, this is an international service, but I do not have any experience working with it outside of the United States. If you would put in maybe something in the chat. Is it, is anyone uh, able to try this with us? We'll use it a little bit if it works. If not, we could try the chat. Jerome, I tried the link from here and it's yeah. waiting to sign and I'm getting a different message. Uh, it's, it says waiting for YTB Youth 147's presentation to begin. Okay. All right. I think it was not activated. That was so that that yeah. might not try it. Uh, now it is. Now it is. Now it is. Okay. I can see. Yeah. Okay. How long are yeah. Done? Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. So this this tool is particularly good with a large group. It's a way to get a sense for 
who wants to take a break or should we change the topic? And we could see some that there are uh, some responses coming in and I trust that this is being displayed on the on the screen share. So what I wanted to get a sense for, is there anybody who is completely new to LinkedIn? And it looks like so far, everyone who's been responding has been working with LinkedIn for a while, some people for several years. So as I go through some of the materials, when we get to the discussion part, I would ask you to share your experiences and information on what you feel works for you. One example that uh, came up yesterday for me with the work that I'm doing with youth time banking is that we had a question for one of the trainers I worked with, I think it was 25 years ago. And I am connected with that trainer on LinkedIn. And I sent a question to him and he responded. So this is incredible. After over 20 years, he's remembered who I was. I explained, and that's one of the guidelines with LinkedIn, that when you're choosing to connect with someone, you explain why you're making that request. And that was very effective. Another example that came up recently in LinkedIn, as I was reviewing the materials, I observed a training that Microsoft gives in their workshop. Microsoft, of course, is the company that acquired LinkedIn. And I looked at the profile for the trainer and the trainer studied sport management when they were in the university. And I thought that was interesting. The, the person was actively involved with sports and coaching in his community and also had a professional job working with LinkedIn. And that was interesting to me because my son is studying sport management and his mother asks me all the time, what kind of job will he get? So I have this as an example to show that through using LinkedIn, we can learn about other people and find out, of course, what their industry is, what their education is. And obviously in our mind, we make these connections and, and then can make a recommendation to someone to observe another individual, perhaps as a role model. So for me recently, uh, LinkedIn has been very helpful. And of course, in communicating with Robert and others uh, that I've met in Uganda, some of the way that we're communicating is on LinkedIn. Okay, so I'm going to pause this now and put it to the side. Anyone who wishes can still uh, participate in this. I'll change the question, or actually maybe I'll change the question. Yeah, in, in a, the next one, yes, I'll go to the next question here and then we'll go uh, more into the materials. So the next question is, what, what is your interest? And I'm going to activate this one. So I know that the one person indicated they had an interest in uh, climate change and another person, I think Edna in IT and social media. So if you like to participate, you can enter that on this screen. And I'm just going to put some examples. Some of the people that I've recently met in, so I put in technology, climate, change. And if a few others, if you would, would be willing to put in the area that you work with, is it teaching? Is it community development, construction, agriculture, science, art, farming, tourism, sports, instruction, so we can get an idea of who's represented in the meeting today. Okay, so I'll leave this one up and, and maybe we'll come back. We're getting some more conservation. I'm working with, or I'm acquainted with some people in Jamaica who are working in sustainable development. And one of the professors uh, at my university is a specialist in sustainable development. Okay, interesting. We'll come back to this. It will save and, and we can talk a little bit more about it towards the end. 
All right, so I want to go into some of the uh, materials here. I explained to you that youth time banking helps youth build strengths and community connections. We use this model called community comm for uh, service to others, design, technology work, making things with our hands and through learning, literacy, workshops, virtual tours, and, and so forth. Now, so that leads to this question, what does time banking TechSoup Connect and LinkedIn have in common? I'm going to, you could put any thoughts that you have in the chat, but let me just suggest all of them have an interest in social connection, interacting with other people. The purpose of youth time banking is to build community. The purpose of TechSoup Connect is to help people like Robert Kibaya and Jerome Scriptunis and Valerie Guerin to become acquainted with each other, to share ideas and their knowledge, and perhaps even to collaborate, like I'm beginning to do with TechSoup Uganda, with uh, Youth and Technology and Development, and with YTB Uganda. This is tremendous. This is extraordinary. I feel in incredibly fortunate to have this opportunity to live and to work this way. And of course, LinkedIn is to create a platform for professionals to build their, their professional networks. And you can see a link at the bottom there to a reference that discusses the work of the anthropologist and psychologist Robin Dunbar who studied this phenomena of how people interrelate from the beginning of time. I think this aspect of our human existence is fundamentally the same. Here on this next slide, uh, this is from the work of Dr. Dunbar, and he explains that there are limits to our capacity. I think this is not surprising to us. So my point in sharing this information is that the emphasis on LinkedIn is to have more and to build and to get more connections and to write and to comment. However, we all recognize there's only 24 hours in a day. We can only do so much. So my recommendation on LinkedIn that I have come to experience myself and perhaps you as well is that we have to be selective. And it may be exciting for a person who is just getting started with LinkedIn to gather connections. And, but after a while, I don't, we don't have time to pay attention to them. And so one of the objectives for our session is to position yourself within LinkedIn and so my interpretation of doing that for my own use of LinkedIn is I'm finding that now I am actually deselecting and unfollowing some people that I may have uh, or connected with before. We'll talk a little bit about the distinction between following and connecting in a bit. So about LinkedIn here, I found this very interesting. I didn't know about the history until I checked. Six people developed it about 10 years ago, and there's their names. As of last year, 740 million people, I imagine it's more now in 2022. Perhaps we'll see an article sometime this year or next year to say that LinkedIn has reached 1 billion members. Now, for mathematics, the network effect, this is not linear. The, and, and just our experience is not linear. The, the network effect makes, it's like a multiplier, if not exponential, how the growth occurs. And that is, is similar in, in, in biological systems as well. So all, most countries of, of the world participate and I just want to uh, make emphasis, we won't have too much time for this, 
But of course, you can access LinkedIn from a computer, from a mobile device, LinkedIn, iOS, Windows, and so forth. I find myself that I'm using my behaviors, I'm using LinkedIn a little bit more on my mobile device than I had. I think all of us perhaps are doing a lot more with mobile computing. And you can create groups, write articles, post photos, videos, join events on LinkedIn. So what I want to share with you in the rest of the time is I organized the ideas in four parts. There are resources. We'll talk a little bit about profile, strategy, and supporting each other to, if individuals are, might be on the one hand, networking and collaborating. On the other hand, there might be a time when any one of us is looking for a different work position, creating a resume, uh, doing informational interviewing, so we could support ourselves in that regard. And that's perhaps one of the most important pieces of advice is that I'm getting from my research is don't try to do everything alone, have a support group, especially for when situations are difficult. Okay, so Valerie, I'm going to ask if you would please put in the chat tinyurl.com YTB links, and I'm going to bring that page over to share so that you, ha you can look at some of these references if you like. So on this page here for today's, is this, maybe I have to refresh. Okay, the resources used for TechSoup Connect Uganda, it will take you to this Google Drive and there are 12 items in here, including the uh, presentation slides, it's fairly large file because I embedded videos in it. There's a LinkedIn profile. There's an article on the privacy settings. There's a listing of other workshops. There's an example of the profile of the trainer for the training I took. Uh, there's a LinkedIn checklist and there's a LinkedIn slide deck that I studied from from one of the trainers. So please feel free to look at that as we're uh, having our session or afterwards, you may find some of the information. The ones that might be most useful for someone who wants to fine tune their LinkedIn would be the LinkedIn sample profile we'll take a look at in a moment and the LinkedIn checklist. Okay, so those are short documents, easy to work with. Okay, so let's take a look at some things over here. I will not go through everything on this page. I'm using it both as a reference and as a to guide some of our conversation. I'm going to show you a couple of LinkedIn pages for trainers. So these are professionals who earn their living working with LinkedIn, training with LinkedIn, <clears throat> or being a consultant or coach. So this individual is someone in my area. So I'm going to bring uh, up his LinkedIn and just show you something I found, I found interesting here. Now, it's possible that if I click on the link, it will work for me. Let's see. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Let me bring that over here. Okay, so just a few things to notice. You may be very experienced with this. Maybe it's not new. One of the things that I found interesting that I didn't realize is that you can put an audio greeting. Hi, this is Kenneth Lang, your LinkedIn introvert. Have a great day. Bye. Did the audio come through okay on that? Because I'm going to show some videos. It so did. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Okay, so this is a, a professional who counsels and coaches people. So this could be a, an excellent example to learn from. This example here, Rick Schroeder, this was a training that I participated in. 
on LinkedIn. And this is the individual who studied as I went through his bio and scrolled down and I realized he studied sport management. So all of us have these interests that we may not be fully consciously focusing on, but then we might see something and our eyes light up and say, oh, I want to, I might ask this person if he would give some advice to my son who's going to be looking for a job in a year or two in sport management. So that's interesting. Okay. And this individual here, I don't want to take too much time. We can come back to them. This individual works with the LinkedIn company. This individual here is a consultant in the area where I live. And I took one of the resources from her work. She does a, a tremendous amount of work. Let me get my other browser here. With LinkedIn workshops. And it's this, let's see if it, and you can see there's three or four pages on different subtopics on how to either work with LinkedIn or job network or write a resume or how to create a brand on LinkedIn. So we don't have time in this training to go into, I'm not an expert on any one of those, but these people are experts. And if you are curious about any of those topics, you can uh, find it in that reference. So for my sake, these resources are quite valuable. And this individual here, I believe is in, in Britain, Northern Ireland in, the Scot in Scotland <clears throat> is where she works. And one of the resources I found that might be useful is the LinkedIn checklist. So you can see the copy here and she gives her advice on how to get started. And she has many trainings and, and videos. So let me get my link back here. Okay. Now let's take a look at, maybe we'll have a little bit of fun here. We're gonna to go to my, my LinkedIn now I'm an average user. I'm learning through preparation for this. Here's some things I learned in preparation for our session today. I learned how to put a better banner up. This one's a tiny bit blurry, so <laughs> Valerie will help me later. And I learned how to, this is very simple, but I never noticed it. You can edit your, your URL here. The URL has a default of your name, probably with five or six numbers. You can change that. You can make it something simple. You could make it refer to your project. So it doesn't literally have to be your name. So I changed mine, <clears throat> excuse me, to YTB Community Com, YTBCC. All right. And the other thing I created was very recently this month was a company page. And on the company page, I'm going to, that's my, the administrative uh, view here. If you have a, a company page and then view as a member. So this is the, the organization that I run youth time banking. And this gives the ability to have individuals a little bit more selectively participate who want to discuss more details, but probably not of general interest to all of the connections that you have on LinkedIn. Now, for what we're doing today, I created a page, like a fictitious page to go through, let's see, is that I don't know if that worked properly. Let's try it again. Yes. So I made a page for my dog. <clears throat> Lucy is my dog, so I put her picture there. I'm going to take a drink of water here. Excuse me. And <clears throat> I selected this banner page here. And you can select something either from LinkedIn when you're doing the construction of your page or you can use uh, another tool like Canva. 
I'll put that up uh, next, okay? And I also created a group here called World of Support Team. I just made this up for the uh, session today. And if you would like to use this or participate, I'll put it in the chat, okay? So this is just practice, it's temporary, it's to use LinkedIn as an example. But if you find this useful, and by the end of our session, if enough people wish to participate, we have my son participating, Robert, some participants from Youth Time Banking, Valerie. So if this is useful, we can use it to share information on using LinkedIn if we want to use it for a little while or, or just for the purpose for today, that's okay also. All right. And so if you do visit that page, I will get a notification to, to accept. I, nothing came in yet. So uh, if someone puts in a request, that will come in. Actually, I'm on the wrong page, I think. Here we go. I'm going to log in to LinkedIn here, and I'm going to log in to the practice account. I was actually on my own account. So this is the, the practice account where I will get the messages, okay? And I see someone requested, and I will approve that, okay? And accept, all right. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> so you can see how nicely that works. I'll check. All right. So if anyone else, either now <clears throat> during our session or later, I will accept. And then if I have other resources, actually what I'll do is I will individually put these resources from the Google Drive. I can add them to this, this work group, okay? And, and we could have some fun with that. If you are looking for work, this is uh, the area where you would indicate what your interests are. Okay, let me go back to the presentation here. All right, so that's some of the resources here. I'm going to go a little bit faster to make sure I get through the materials. There's more here than, of course, we will discuss during the session. So I leave this for you to have as a resource. One of the things I want to recommend, if you uh, are not familiar with it, is the Microsoft Virtual Workshops and Training. So of course, LinkedIn is part of Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft Word, of course, is, is a Microsoft product. And so Microsoft is very good at integrating their applications in an ecosystem or platform that in which the applications are many times interoperable. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is try a search on LinkedIn and see what happens. And these trainings here are free. So I see there are two here. Yesterday, there were three, building your personal brand and an overview of LinkedIn and some other tools. Now, let me get my, my page back. Let's see, I think it was, okay, I just, yeah, I want to go back. One of the Microsoft trainers, let's see, I just misplaced where my other page was, or is it behind me? Okay. Is that you can, let's see, I'll bring it up here, the Microsoft, you, you can search the trainings by time zone, Microsoft training workshops. Yep. And here's where we were. Okay. There should be a spot in here where you can search by language, by topic, by date. And I think if you 
get into the search a little more deeply, you can search by uh, time zone. And another one is Microsoft Events. I'm not sure where the, which browser it's launching. Let's see if I could just copy the link and then I'll paste it in. And I think this, so on the Microsoft Events, yes, it has a, a time slider here. Not necessarily the UTC time, but you can get it to work to bring it into your time zone or some time during the day when you can participate if you like. Okay. Jerome, do they have recordings if you cannot attend? No, this is something interesting. That's a good question. So I'll let me give you a tip on what worked for me. So I'm going to search on LinkedIn, and I participated, or I joined, I registered for this workshop or this training. It's 60 minutes. In the Microsoft workshops, Microsoft presenters use Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams works in a mode, it's like a webinar mode, it's called live mode. So what I did was I started the workshop on a different computer or on a different browser and I let it run and I did not end it. I did not exit. And the next day I was able to watch it, which is exactly what I did. Actually, I watched it over two days, uh, a little bit at a time. So it's not a recording. I couldn't save it, but I could preserve it and go back to the beginning of the training and play it. And that's one of the features with Microsoft Live. It's part of Microsoft Teams. Sometimes if you need to pause during the training, you can continue from that point. You won't lose anything that had happened. Does that make sense? I hope. <laughs> so I want to share two, thank you. I want to share two uh, things on, on this slide here, the LinkedIn profile checklist. So I think if you double click, if you downloaded the slides, it will allow you to scroll through. That's a little bit uh, smaller. So I'm going to bring back the, the Google slide. So it's available both in Word, if you wanted to edit it or look at it in PDF format. Jerome, uh, can you share the slide a bit better there? Or, uh, yeah, I, yep, I can. I have it. Tell me if this is, is this better? It is, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. I'm just going to go at a very high level. The recommendation or the learning I've been getting from studying what the experts say and what I'm tips I'm picking up from trainers is it goes back to how preciously time is and how we have to manage our time. So I would say use LinkedIn as a tool, but if it's not useful for you, you can let it go for a while, come back to it. I don't spend a long time during the day, I check things. And I, I like this author in Canada, Malcolm Gladwell. He wrote a book, I think, called Thin Slicing. And there's other psychologists as well as writers who talk about this. That as you get more and more experience, you can make judgments on very selective information. And that's the way I'm using LinkedIn. I don't try to be perfect. As they suggest in the photo, that's a very nice photo of this young man. And the photo that I have, I actually went to a couple of years ago when Microsoft had the physical retail outlets and there was uh, a special place where they had a professional photographer, lighting, light shields, and they would give you recommendation to take your picture. Those pictures were not better 
than the one that I have. I went back to what a friend took of me at my work where I was in front of a poster or an event board for a project we were working on. And that looked comfortable and natural for me. And, and so that's, it wasn't posed or, and so I, and that's what the recommendation is <clears throat> on many of the materials I reviewed is to tell people who you are and what you're interested in. And one of the things that I like very much that was a very simple advice for how to the words on your profile is to understand the difference between a buzzword and a keyword. And so the definition that they gave that's uh, easy to remember is a buzzword is very general. It's not specific. It's something like, I'm passionate about this, or I love to work with animals, or uh, I really enjoy technology, or, but that's not telling me anything. What, when you use uh, a keyword is that I like to use Python as a language for programming, then I know that's specific. That's a specific keyword. Or my, our dogs are beagles. So that's a keyword that I would put in what my interests are. I'm a little bit more specifically. I don't just like pets or dogs. I like beagles. And here, this person is talking about microeconomics, wants to work in finance, financial industry, uh, did an internship with the venture capital firm. So those are very specific keywords. So that's excellent. That's excellent. And put what you would like to do. And if you like to do something, then you might even volunteer in the workplace. You can also volunteer. So you could volunteer in your community, but there will be projects when the director or manager or department head asks who can help with this short project. And that's something that you can get credit for and add it to uh, your resume. So this, I like this particular checklist because it's short, it's two pages, it's specific, and it points you to the exact areas on the LinkedIn profile. One of the questions I would like to ask someone if I was getting to know them is, what new things are they learning or what things do they want to learn? What journals do they read or magazines? Because I think that tells you if you could go on a plane trip or train or bus and you could sit, if someone else is the pilot or driver, what would you wish to read? You might read a novel, you might read a trade journal or industry magazine. And I found I like to read about psychology and I was studying engineering. So that gave me a message that maybe I could combine them in some way. All right. So this, I think is very good that, and I'll come back, I'll come back to that a little bit. Jerome, can I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just a couple of things that came up in the chat that are very interesting. Yes. Well, everything's interesting. What I have to say from being on multiple Zooms with you, this is one of the nicest chats I've come across. And someone made a comment about how here in Africa, many people don't consider LinkedIn as a tool for connectivity, but as it is just at any social media for socializing, which is interesting because I introduced LinkedIn to a friend the other day and I said, I feel like it's more mature than Facebook. Yes. That's, I thought that was yeah. a very interesting concept there. And the other is someone's asking if we're going to have time for questions at the end. So I wanted to bring yes. your, you know, that because this is bringing up great thoughts. Thank you, Valerie. It's invaluable to have your help. I'm very grateful for you bringing that to my attention. <clears throat> I, I try to glance at the chat <clears throat> as I'm talking, but I'm not picking up those. So what I want to do is quickly go through some things here 
I'm going to recommend if you want a tool for creating a banner page, you can go to LinkedIn. Okay, I'm going to advance through, where's my mouse? There we go. I'm, going, I'm not going to play all of the videos because I think we'll run out of time. I want to show you a demonstration, okay, on using Resume Assistant. <clears throat> I put the example file in the Google Drive. I'm going to just spend two minutes maybe on this. So I want to go to a template, select modern chronological resume, create, and I just want you to notice that Resume Assistant, which is a tool with LinkedIn, is integrated with Microsoft Word, and it, it can give you guidance. If I write, I'll write software. See, I start to write software, and it will say industry. I'll say accounting, and then it will give examples so that you can get ideas to help you if you wish to use that, okay? So that's, I was not aware uh, un, until I started researching and for our session today, that tool existed, okay? All right, this is very short, it's one minute. I'd like to, this gives advice on creating a resume so that it works with applicant tracking system. If you want your resume to pass through the applicant tracking system, remember that keywords are key. Take a look at the job description again, identify the terms that are routinely popping up, and if you possess those skills and experience, use that exact terminology and incorporate it throughout your resume. When it comes to your resume's design, less is truly more. I know that charts, fancy font types, unusual bullets, they all seem like a great idea, but once your resume passes through the applicant tracking system, chances are all the information they contained will be lost to the system. When you're considering what file type to use, beware. Check the system and make sure it accepts PDFs before you submit your application. And if you're not sure, play it safe and use a Word document instead. Okay, that's very good. Okay, I'm going to skip over Workable and Recruiter System Connect. If we have time, we'll come back to them. There is reference information here. Those are tools that organizations use when they have a volume of resumes to, to filter. This chart here, I've put some links to some of the online workshops that did have a recording that I reviewed to select materials for what we're talking about now. I put some points in here, some suggestions from my experience that uh, you might want to consider when completing your profile. I'll draw your attention to this article here. I think this is important and I'm going to, let's see, copy the link. This is something that I plan to do that I just recently learned about for our session is to go through, read this short article and go through the privacy settings. I had no idea there was so much. It's actually too much for most human beings because there are default settings. It's like reading the fine print on every website. You sim I simply don't have time for it. And that, but here, this one, I think it's worth paying attention to and being very selective on the privacy settings for LinkedIn. Okay. One other thing that I discovered in the past year is the importance of digital certificates and badges to be used to demonstrate competence. And there, 
the world of education has changed significantly, I think, over the past 10 years with the online trainings like edX.org and Udemy and Coursera and so many others. And I've recently learned about new world of work. So I'm going to recommend that you look at that. I want to show one more short video and then we'll go into some questions. Learning today happens anywhere and everywhere. It happens in the classroom, on the job, in the community and online. We can no longer think of learning in one way. Today's social and economic challenges require learning that engages students, keeps pace with technological change, teaches 21st century skills, and provides meaningful assessments of our learning. How do we recognize and value the way we learn today? What if we used badges? What is a badge? A badge is an online representation of a skill or achievement you've earned. They've been used in gaming and online spaces to motivate behavior, recognize achievement, and establish credibility. What if we used badges for learning? Badges could be created and issued by anyone, schools, online spaces, cultural and civic institutions, community and professional organizations to represent a limitless set of skills, achievements, and knowledge. Badges could be earned by anyone completing programs or projects or demonstrating specific knowledge, skills, and abilities. Badges could be shared on websites or blogs, social media profiles, online portfolios and resumes, leading to real opportunities like connecting with potential collaborators, earning school credit, or getting a job. But in order to give badges wide credibility and acceptance, a robust badge ecosystem needs to be developed. Much work has already been done in critical areas. Mozilla's Open Badges infrastructure provides the software and open technical standard for everyone to earn, issue, and display badges across various contexts. A growing community of badge experts has developed various models of badge systems for anyone to use and adapt. Significant research has been done to provide a base of evidence about the potential of badges. A campaign is underway enlisting employers, colleges and universities, urban school districts and after-school programs to expand demand for and supply of badging opportunities. The promise is to ensure that badges give everyone recognition for the learning that happens anywhere and lets them share it in the places that matter. So what do badges mean for learning? Badges recognize learning as a lifelong pursuit. For youth, badges let us see that learning goes beyond classrooms. Skills like creativity and collaboration and passionate interests become as visible as subjects like math and science. Badges show our learning as more than a collection of test scores and grades, but as learning pathways rich with detail and information. This empowers students to guide their own learning, teachers to better engage students, and colleges to expand their admissions process. Badges continue into adulthood, recognizing the learning that happens in various jobs and in personal and professional development opportunities. Badges capture knowledge, skills, and accomplishments not found on resumes. This helps workers transfer learning across different industries and employers find the unique talents and skill sets in demand. Badges cultivate critical values needed in learning today. They make learning more open, democratic, and transparent. They cultivate deeper and connected learning, where learning happens through sharing. They make learning more adaptable to change and open to innovation. Openness, sharing, innovation. These are the values needed in learning today. Okay, so I'd like to uh, ask Valerie to bring me up to, to date on the, there were perhaps some questions. We Someone asks if we every time four questions and answers. So would you be able to open the mic or ask people to unmute to ask some questions? Sure. Let's see. I'm going to stop share. Let me bring the bring. Okay. So would anyone like to tell us? what their opinion is on the usefulness of LinkedIn or one of the comments that Valerie explained to me was that some people feel that 
LinkedIn is similar to Facebook. Is that, is that correct? That was one comment. And there's also a hand raised by initiative for Rachel. Is that it? Have I got your name correct? Thanks. Yes, Hi, Rachel. Rachel. Good thank morning. You. Good morning. After <laughs> yes. <laughs> so thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm a development professional empowering persons with disability through education technology and assistive technology in Africa. And my question, I have two questions. One question is around content. Like someone rightly mentioned, these days we see a lot of LinkedIn members share content around personal activities in their lives. For example, I just got married. There's a wedding anniversary, my dad's birthday, my mom's birthday, my dog's birthday. Yes, it's yes, Sarah. yes. Yeah, sometimes weaving the stories to tell a message is what matters. But someone rightly said, it's more like people are trying to convert LinkedIn into a Facebook ground for socializing. And it's now becoming a personal level rather than professional. And my question is, what could you advise us to do as LinkedIn users to have an impressive engagement, yet impactful and less personal, like I had mentioned earlier? Yes. My second question is around user friendliness, um, accessibility for LinkedIn users with disability. I work with a community of people with disability who complain that many times users of, pers users of LinkedIn do not take into cognizance alternate tests to enable advanced usage for persons with disability to thrive in the community of LinkedIn. So for example, people who have visual impairment cannot be able to view an image if it's not well captioned or it's not yes. test friendly. So yes. my question to you is, are there suggestions that you could provide to LinkedIn users around this aspect? Also in contribution to this question, is this is something that we advocate for in my organization and I'll be willing to share more information resource or now to enable like a user friendly or accessible experience for LinkedIn users with disability. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I listen very closely, Rachel, to I'm going to give two quick responses. I agree with you on how LinkedIn and sometimes is becoming too social and less professional. My, my strategy for that is if someone is sharing too many things personally, I don't feel the need to connect or follow them and I would deselect them. And I, there's a, an option when the message comes in in the upper right hand corner, you can select to mute or unfollow, but stay connected. I've been doing that more and more so that I don't have that personal news coming through. Number two, I see that the use of groups can be valuable for that. So for this, I created a world of support team. It's just this imaginary practice for now, but it, if it's useful, we could have like code of conduct or rules of participation. Keep it short, just tell us something to help for the greater good, not social information. In regard to disability rights, inclusion, accessibility, if you please send me your email or I'll write to Robert so I'll communicate with you. I the person I gave as the example is Dr. Al Condolucci. He spent his entire career, he's a psychologist in working with uh, disability, youth individuals with disability. The organization was called CLASS. He was a professor at the University of Pittsburgh. And also that Microsoft has a training to teach people who have a disability, a visual impairment or a hearing impairment or some other challenge in using technology, how they can uh, make modifications. Uh, those are things that individual can do. And then it tells other people who do not have that challenge or impairment, how to make their materials compatible and friendly for 
an individual who is differently abled. And I know that of at least one software that can remind you if you wish to do those things that you forgot to do something. If there are better ideas, I, I welcome them. But if you would give Robert or send me, I'll put my email here. I'd be happy to maybe brainstorm things. And of course, if it's in a group, you could make that uh, request. I, I am have huh. an interest to do what you're uh, wishing to accomplish. Jerome, if I may interrupt, you have yeah. two other hands raised and one okay. um, common thread I'm finding in the chat is about premium. Why do we need to pay for yeah. premium? Yeah, and so another let, yeah. I just want to get a comment in there. Are we using the unprofessional version or do we need to pay and get the standard version to unlock yep. some features that we're not getting in the initial page? Yeah. Yet? Yeah. Okay. So uh, a quick response on that. I, you can use a trial of the <laughs> premium. I, I would use a different word. It's maybe the standard version or the premium version. It's the standard version. I, I just don't want to misunderstand. It's not unprofessional. You have more capability to Let's say I wanted to communicate with an author of a book that I read, and I found that author on LinkedIn, but because it's not a first or second or third connection, LinkedIn might tell me I have to have a premium account in order to send a message to that person. So that, if that was very important to you, then maybe you would upgrade. I tried it for a while. I could see that there are some nice things with it. I don't use it heavily enough that I, after the free trial expired, I, I just discontinued. I did not pay the monthly subscription. Does that answer the question? And then John has a hand raised as well. Yeah, John, Jeff. Yes. My... My, first of all, I thank you so much because this has been very interesting, very good training. My question or my comment is that we, the training has always training on online and the time has been limited. Then how can, I, can we remain in touch? That's why I had requested for the, the email so that we can remain in touch and then interact. Then uh, last but not least, I would like to see how I can perfect in the use of the, the, the Lincoln. It's on the same thing. Sure. I, I think we could use the group that I set up as a practice for, I'm going to put the link in, <laughs> I, I didn't mean to say it that way. I'm going to find the link to the group which I did, and I have it, and I'm going to paste it in. So if you would request to join, that would be a place that we could continue the conversation, put in some questions. I believe I know through my network, I know some experts. I, I make a joke to my family, so please don't take this sentence seriously that I'm going to say. I would tell my son or my wife, I know almost anything. And they would say, no, no one knows everything. I said, however, I can read books. I can do research. I can talk to Valerie. I can talk to Robert. I can ask questions on, the, on LinkedIn. I have my work network. So if enough people, whatever question comes up, you could probably find someone to give you advice. So that's one of the reasons I enjoy so much working with, with Robert, with Valerie. I see Paul is on, I will meet him more. And Stephen joined us from, from Jamaica. Teferis, do you have a good enough connection to, to give us a comment on the perspective of using LinkedIn by individuals in Jamaica? Tevery sent me a, a message privately that her connection was 
not great. So maybe that Taffer won't work. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be great. <clears throat> or Tafaris, if you could put something into the chat. She wrote earlier, LinkedIn is definitely the Facebook for networking, in my opinion. It aids with professional development, especially for me as a college student. It is for professional development, she said. Sorry, she said, I have to go back to it, sorry. That she's using it as a tool for professional development as a college student. And then you have yeah. two more. Go ahead. Let's see, you have Thelma and you have John. I don't know. John, did you have another question? And then you have Thelma as well. Yeah, hello Thelma, if you would go next. Hello, Jerome, can you hear me? Yes, hello, hello, Thelma. Okay, good, great. Good, good to talk with you. Yes, I've been silent, but listening to everything you've been saying, and I found the session very informative. I've been a passive LinkedIn member for about two years, but now I, and, but now I need the, the push for connectivity, connections with groups. I realize I have to go back and spend a bit more time and delve into all of these new functions that you've exposed. So I'm grateful for this session. And why I raise my hand really is you were trying to reach somebody in Jamaica. And since I'm in Jamaica, I just wanted to say, yes, it is well used here. Yeah. It's very clear. And there really is no need for me as a professional to be spending more time on Facebook. I should really be spending time on LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. thanks for exposing all of these new features that I had not been aware of. Oh, it's uh, you're welcome, Thelma. I'm happy you spoke. And are are you in which part of Jamaica? Is it Saint Anne Parish or another area? I see the area. I'm in uh, Manchester, in Mandeville. We consider okay. it one of the more beautiful places. It's two thousand odd feet above sea level. Very nice and cool. So it's my preference for being in Jamaica is in the cooler areas. Please send me your email, and I communicate sometimes with people from Westmoreland's Bluefield yeah. at okay. Queen Heath, and happy uh, to meet you. R Robert, what do you think? Are we, do, do you, if there are enough interest, we can continue to share information in this group I set up, but the most important thing is that the people who are joining the call that it's useful for your time it's worthwhile and if in your work if some question comes up Robert and I and Valerie have a good connection through TechSoup Connect we know people from our various work and if there's some way we can share ideas or be of assistance, I'm happy to, to do that. Sorry, Jerome, can I interrupt again? Yes. We have another question from Irene, and I also wanted to comment that some people have been asking for this particular recording of this meeting, so is that possible to share? People have been asking for the slides and the recording of the meeting. Now, I believe I, you have this yes. entire chat and copy yes. being emailed right? yes i think we will be able to get a copy robert we'll get that yeah we, uh, yeah, we recorded everything and uh, and then the slides uh, developed by jeremy will also be spared yes and i'm mm -hmm. able to save the chat one person asked about I've been following a number of people on LinkedIn. I realize most people post about successes and the likes are high. Is that the way to go? I give you my opinion is that the, the use of social media, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook, has an effect on us psychologically. And there's research done about how some different social media affects the mood or causes depression in, in certain people. I'm mostly interested in sharing ideas. It's nice to hear of a success or something, but if all we hear is good news, it sounds strange, that can be psychologically upsetting to people 
because my life is not good news 24 hours a day. There's difficulty, there's struggle, there's disappointment, there's losses, there's grief. A close friend died earlier in the week. I try to keep the perspective that if someone is just telling me about every good thing that happened to them, I don't really need to hear that. I don't begrudge them that, but that is not meaningful to me. It doesn't help me be a better person. And that's why I would go back to Dunbar's number. There's a handful of people that you are close to that you really care deeply about and you want to know, are they okay? Did they have a setback? Do they need encouragement, maybe a hug? But I don't feel as though that's possible with hundreds of people. It's just not enough time in the day. And I've noticed, I watch the role models, like one of my role models is Dr. John Lyons, who's the head professor of the Department of Innovation and Population Health at the University of Kentucky. He doesn't do that stuff. I look at Dr. Al Condolucci, who is the expert on working with individuals with disabilities. He doesn't do that. And, and so my opinion, it's an opinion. And of course, sample other people for their opinion. I, I don't care to praise every or, or hear. I'm not against it. I'm not uh, negative on it. It's just, you have to be selective on what you do. And what I find now is that I'm paying attention to the things that matter to me. So the things that matter to me are Valerie and Robert and Paul and Stephen and a man I work with, Ken. And so the people I'm working most closely with, like maybe 10 people, but everyone else, it's like, I, so much goes through and then someone will say, did you see it on? Like, I don't know. <laughs> if I turned it on and it was on the screen at that time, maybe I saw it. But the only ones that I really look for is a message from Robert, Valerie, Paul, Stephen, Ken, Dr. Condolucci, Dr. Lyons, Dr. Rose Perry, Ricky Bird. Those are the ones that I, that's how I behave. But of course, this is my opinion. So I qualify it by saying that. Yeah. yeah, there's someone is asking about using LinkedIn for business. Uh, I don't have a specific experience on that, but the two things I noticed is that there's the open to link on the profile for freelance work. And one of the resources, again, they're all links to videos and workshops from that's in, I'll, I'll tell you specifically which one it is on let's see it's the uh, LinkedIn job the virtual job search workshop I'll do let's see I will put that in the chat and tell me if that comes through I think it's so if you click on that link that I just shared I think that will take you to the resource. And if you go down the list of recorded workshops, there's one in there about managing a business on LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm skimming through the chat if there's, uh, okay, is there any anything else I'm uh, not catching, Valerie? Well, a lot of Are interest we... in the recording, so that's great. Sure. Some sure. hands had to go. Yes, I understand. But I, but I believe that sharing this video and using the LinkedIn, I don't believe everyone's on LinkedIn because I believe it was, I can't find the name again, but someone shared their email and I went directly to LinkedIn to find them and they're not there. So I believe some friends here, Hannah, for example, don't have a LinkedIn address account. Uh, yeah, I could be wrong because I looked through LinkedIn via her email. Um, I'm wondering if anyone here doesn't have an account at all that could use assistance in setting one up. Is the uh, screen share working? So that's a fun, I learned how to do some things with 
uh, PowerPoint that I had not tried before. So this is one of them. And I learned how to embed the videos. I'm going to uh, bring up the and and I know it will be time to let's see did I am I doing the screen share oh here we are okay okay is the screen share coming through okay yeah it does okay what I want to do is double check here as we close out the meeting where I'll go back in here we have one notification and okay oh okay great okay so approve oh several people uh, sorry i just find one more question okay sorry go ahead valerie thank you for the session i'm a business coach and mentor mostly offering consultancy services how can i sell on linkedin and you got to thank you for the copy in advance yes that is the question that i was responding to with that link and the link goes to this resource the i think there's something in here if if the person who's interested would scroll through something about how to work as a business on linkedin so that's and then the other suggestion uh, i would have is let's see let me find uh linkedin again okay are the people who is to look on the websites of these two people christine i'll make that a uh, highlight in green louise these are and this these three people so please understand, I am a person who is a chapter leader, as is Robert, through TechSoup Connect. I have some experience with working with LinkedIn. One of my board members on my NGO or nonprofit organization is employed at Microsoft. So that's an advantage to me. I could draw on that network and get advice and guidance. But I am not a trainer in LinkedIn. I'm not a consultant. I'm not a coach for LinkedIn. I am benefiting from the guidance and information, instruction, materials, articles, and recording from these individuals, Louise Brogan, Christine Dykeman, Kenneth Lang, and there are many more across the world. Of course, we all are constrained by the limitations of the hours in the day. And so it's fortunate that there are experts across the world, and we can certainly learn about those outside of our area and, and take advantage of them, but of course, to be selective. And these three individuals are the ones that when I have questions about LinkedIn, I would refer to their materials. And they have newsletters, they run workshops. You could probably send them perhaps a direct question and they perhaps would answer it or point you to uh, an article that they wrote that addresses that. And I found when I do that, I, as I did yesterday with Dr. Al Condolucci. So allow me to, to share that link. And Valerie, if you would put this, I think it's Al Condolucci with alcondolucci.com. So this is the individual, I think Rachel, you were asking. Uh, oh, the other thing to tell you, Jerome, sorry, Rachel brought up an important point. Yeah. The link that I thought it might've just been me, but you need to share the Google doc to public because it's a, it's asking for- uh, Thank you, thank you. Let me see problem. if I can, He's thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, let me see if I can do that immediately. Yes, thank yes. Where is the share? Okay, let's see. I want to change this. Anyone? No, any, I want it to be anybody. How do anyone in this group? I just click here. Anyone with the link. Okay. 
Okay, please try it again. I'm going to put this link in. Thank you very much for that feedback. And I'm going to put the Google Drive in. Could someone please click on the Google Drive link and tell me, is it responding where you have access? Robert, does it? Yeah. It works okay I for have, you? Okay. I have access now. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then this a link I put up, this is the individual who is an expert. He's written several books on working with people with disabilities that not directly related to Rachel's question, but might be of interest. What I want to show you here is this is a course that I took on accessibility. This was very good. Where is it? Am I spelling it correctly? Let's see. I'll try it one more time. It could be it's in a different category and search. Okay, here, this. So Microsoft Accessibility Solutions. So this is useful. Now, th this is not every single technology. This is how to work with Microsoft technology and <laughs> understand the accessibility options or settings, controls that can be adjusted for visual or hearing or perhaps tactile challenges. I This I would recommend for myself to take this once a year. It was one of the best Microsoft workshops, in my opinion, that I participated in last year. Here's a selection for time zone. So it's plus three, is that correct? And I go, and so this would be, yeah, see, it's very, it's midnight, right? So what you can do, Robert, maybe if you were up at this time, you can start the session and then you can go to sleep, but leave your computer on. When you wake up, you can go back and play it. Does, does, in other words, it's not recorded, but because it uses Microsoft Live, you will be able to pause it, replay it up until you close the session or turn the computer off, okay? So I do that sometimes when it's at an unusual time or that doesn't work for me. Okay, a anything else, Valerie? I'm happy to continue for a few more minutes. I know that with everyone's schedule, people will need to leave. Um, Yes, you. Thank you for that. You have another question directed to you from Rachel. Okay. Is the screen share on? I'm trying to turn it off. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Okay. Is this only for Microsoft products or is it a universal approach to internet accessibility for persons with disabilities? Yes. Thank you again, Rachel, for your question. It's for Microsoft uh, products. There is another one, again, I, I'm not aware of a universal one, but web, there is one for web accessibility. So I'm gonna do a screen share uh, again. And Valerie, I'll ask you to maybe put some, let's see, am I, I, I I'm just, is the screen share on? I can't tell. Yeah, it is on. It is on. Okay. So yeah, do, you, do you see the search, <laughs> the search I'm doing? Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah. So there's web access. There's, I'm going to put one, let's see, digital accessibility. So I guess there are, let me see if there's a general one. Oh, this is what, I think this is it. So this is for web websites and where's my, what I would like to have Robert 
is a yeah. monitor that is three feet wide and three feet high <laughs> because <laughs> I'm still learning on the Zoom sessions, things go wow. in different places and I can't find them. Okay, there is also a tool when I come across it, I will share it uh, with everyone. I'll, I'll make one attempt here. It's called website, yeah, yeah, accessibility checker. Okay, so this might be it. I thought it had, okay, so I'm going now, I'm going to admit that my website is probably not going to pass the test. So let's see uh, what happens. Okay, I'll do this later. I don't want to go through that right now, but I'll put this. So there are tools that you can, and there are some <laughs> websites that have, there's like a mark or a logo that indicates if the web platform itself has been recognized at, as being meeting the accessibility standards. Let's see, is it logo? There's some governing body. Okay, here. And I think <laughs> these are the logos. And I guess there's this section 508 so may, maybe on here, it, I thought there was a free, I don't know if it's a tool or a, a guideline. This one, there's something that involves pricing. A large business, I guess maybe like Microsoft would have a budget. But I think the important thing as Dr. Condalusi would uh, advise is that it's important to advocate. Rachel, I would like to share something with you. Are you still with us? Absolutely, I am. Yeah. Um, Rachel, you can if share this, in the chat. Yeah, if this is of interest to you, and if there's a way for me to get it to you, I would be happy to get this to you. One of the people I know uh, through my work that I have the very good fortune of knowing is Dr. Rose Perry. She is a neuroscientist with Mount Sinai Healthcare System in New York City. She is the founder and executive director of a beautiful organization. Oh, and also Rachel, this is tremendous for people with disability to know that about this technology. And this is Putrino Lab. This man is extraordinary. I met him. He is like Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo. I am astonished at what he does for people with disabilities. And this is a person I know, this is for children. Oh, this is also on LinkedIn. Uh, let's see, if I go here, it's called Preston's March. Yes, Preston's March for Energy. I just saw it in here. This is also beautiful work with people with disabilities, with children mostly. Preston's March for Energy here. Follow? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the chat. Uh, those who are interested can follow that. But this, I would recommend. Did I put this in here? Let me put this link in. This is just... Uh, extraordinary. I, I don't know how else uh, to say the work that this organization does with people who have all kinds of disabilities, loss of limb, how they have special projects and online activities. Is this coming through in the share? 
So this is just tremendous work. And okay, so I'll leave that in there. But Rachel, the last one I want, this is a puzzle. This is about disability rights. Also beautiful work. Let's see, this one, it's, of course, this is based in the experience of the United States of a, hist uh, a moment in history of disability rights called the 504 sit-in. So I'm not very familiar with that, which is great for me to learn more. Okay. And I want to thank Valerie for her time in helping us. I know that she has the schedule with her children's education. So I'm just going to, this, for those who work in disability rights, of course, this is about the history in the United States. And so one of the projects of the social creatures is to create a puzzle to help educate people about the experiences and challenges and pain that people with disabilities have faced and for to educate others to be more compassionate and inclusive and to meet people and to understand that we all can collaborate all of us have abilities and feelings and we're all worthy and have a right to participate in life so i expect that within two months this is very new my organization youth time banking helped to have a, a successful funding for this kickstarter campaign which is like startup funding for the manufacturer of these games and this other one i mentioned i think to you, Robert, we didn't have a chance to talk about it. I think it's called Nabu. It's, I hope, did I guess the right? Yes. So this is, I don't know if it's, it's not specific to a dis, disability, but it's to make literacy and reading available in any uh, language. And it's a tool, it's like a, an app, I think, and handheld device. So if this is useful for Africa, I know the people who are, who work with this. It's a pleasure for me to have this opportunity to continue to do work with Robert Kabaya and with Valerie Guerin, thank you, Valerie, and to meet another person from Jamaica, to have the help of a youth leader in YTB Jamaica, Taff Gray, join us. Is what, what do you recommend, Robert? Is there, is there anything, any open item that we can address now, or I'm gonna go back to, okay, so I'm gonna approve. Great. So this is, I put a, I think a survey. Okay, great. Some people are working on the survey. Everyone is, is getting to meet my dog or the dog of my family, Lucy. And so that's wonderful. Thank you. Someone put in a comment here. So in this, if people participate in in this group we'll keep it focused on important things to help people with their work life or does someone know a resource or have an idea on how something how something how to do something so robert i feel like maybe my dog deserves the credit for the success <laughs> Uh, because <laughs> the the most popular part of yeah I'm gonna do stop the screen here is is her group and I like to have fun when I work with people and I think if people can make jokes and be kind to each other they can do a lot and work in good faith and to encourage my wish for my life 
is that someone could say that they saw that it was important to me to lift a person's spirit. That is what I would take most pride in, that I wish to help someone to go to the, where they want to go to develop and accomplish what they want to. And I would say to someone, the only advice I have to anyone is do not hold yourself back and do not hold other people back. And with going back to LinkedIn and hiring, I like the philosophy of Richard Branson. I think he is the founder of the Virgin Airlines. He says he works with people and tells them, I want you to leave, but I want to make the work here so meaningful and good that you do not want to leave. So he smiles and makes a joke about that. But anyone who has worked with me, I tell them if there's a better place to go there, I don't want to tie your hand to the table here, go to the better place and someone else will come. And I think when we treat each other that way, enough people don't want to go. They want to stay and work with you on the projects and the work. And then if, if someone finds an interesting possibility somewhere else, a, a great, celebrate that. Go, do good things. I, I believe in that. Yeah, thank you, Robert. I, I will tell you now, so Robert sent me a message maybe, I don't know, three weeks ago about this meeting. And I was so excited to do something to work with people in Africa. I said, yes. And then later on, I thought, oh my goodness, wow. What did he ask me to do? And I tell my wife, she says, you're crazy. You're crazy. I said, but this is so important, so exciting. And, and I, in my work, I try to use myself as an example. I, I, when someone is an intern or I'm the supervisor, I say, here's a suggestion, try this or do something better. And don't ever think I have the best idea. We together have the best idea. And I think Paul or someone in their email signature says, we stand on the shoulders of giants or we stand on each other's shoulders, we help each other. And that's, I think that's just great. And I certainly, I, I could say, I probably don't have any original idea. It's all of the ideas that I'm taking that come from the things that I read, the people I talk to, the impressions I get, the things that I see. I'm going to leave you one last thing and then we stop and, and we'll do a, an activity that we do in youth time banking. We're going to do our countdown. So I'm going to do one last screen share. And is the screen share working? Okay. Sorry, maybe you're not. Okay. How is, am I in the right spot or, or not? Let's see. I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to do okay here and share. Okay, I think this is correct. Now, do you see the blank screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, Robert, this is a surprise for you. You will know exactly what it is when I type it. So, this is a game we play to have fun at home. Maybe you know this. And Valerie, if you're still there, you or I could put this in the chat. We play this game called Wordle. Okay, is that easy to grab and put in the chat? Power okay. language, or, or I have it actually right here. Yeah, I'm going to put it in. So maybe you'll enjoy it. I'll put it also in our group. And Robert and I played a game, I think last week or the week before, and we had some fun with it. So the instructions are there. The game is very simple. Anyone can play. It's one time per day, one word, and it's fun to do as like an icebreaker or with a family or friend and yeah. Okay, so 
in uh, youth time banking, we give a countdown. Is this good to close the meeting out now, Robert, or do you want to make any announcement or final, final comment or final question? Yes, maybe my final comment to be actually uh, to thank you, Jerome, uh, for this time and to thank Valerie for the time for responding to chat comments uh, is really very good. Thank you so much, Valerie. And I also thank all members from uh, web 2 twice cm platform. Yeah, thank you so much. And Jerome and Boris call you to offer trainings to us or, or wherever we have a gap. So please don't get tired of us. <laughs> yeah. I'm writing a, a thank you to everyone. It's to teach is to learn, to be on these sessions. I get uh, so much from them. I hope this time has been worth your while. I am grateful I bow to you and thank you for sharing. As one of my coaches, my mentor who died this week for sharing the slice of eternity, Dr. Edgar Kahn, may he rest in peace. And in Youth Time Banking, we have a countdown. Valerie, you'll help me, please. So everyone could turn on. Is this okay, Robert? We will bring to closure. Yeah, maybe one last word is to thank maybe Texu. Uh, Tex, Tex, Texu, Te, Texu Connect uh, for the platform. Yeah, we are yes. using their platform and uh, for the support, the technical support they offer to us whatever we are. So we are so grateful for that offer. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much. And I agree. And that's now, Eli. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can go on. Yeah, Eli Vandergeisen is the one who introduced us. So I thank him. Yes, now fine to. Okay, so if you turn on your microphones, okay, we're going to clap a little bit. You could turn on your microphones. Valerie is going to help me. And we are going to count down from 10 to 1. And then Robert, you can close and end the session, okay? Yep. Everyone ready? 10, Ten. Nine, 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 eight, eight, eight seven, 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 six, six five, five, four. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank bye you. Bye. We'll see bye you. Bye. bye. bye.